Welcome back. It's one of the biggest health epidemics of this century. The opioid crisis, bigger than anyone could have predicted, and according to some experts, it could take a decade or more to get it under control. Only on News 5, our Mark Boyle talking to the people hurting from this crisis in another way. There are patients who say opioid restrictions are leaving them with no options for treatment of legitimate conditions. It's one mile around, uh, going all the way around, so I'll do typically three or four miles a day walk, just walking. Stephen Smith simply cannot stay still. Your body basically starts telling you have to move. He has a rare condition commonly known as restless leg syndrome. I can kind of force it down, but there's a sort of a growing pressure. And if I don't do something to move to reduce that pressure, then eventually Unconsciously, I will have a violent muscle reaction. For years, Stevens dealt with this condition, first using medication typically given to Parkinson's patients, but now he says his only options include opioids. The one that is generally preferred because it has not only a, a longer action, but also have, helps a little bit on some of the Parkinson's side is methadone. But Smith says the crackdown on opioids is putting his health at risk. The Pueblo doctors uh, are not willing to accept me as a patient. Uh, at least I haven't found one who, who is uh, because of the fact that I'm on a very low dose of opioids. And he's now forced to drive to Denver for appointments when he is able to get medication. The regulations are a lot to deal with. Uh, pill counting where you can get a random call at any time and you have to take your bottle of pills to them within 24 hours so that they can count them to make sure that you're not selling them. And he's not alone. It started shortly after my accident, which was about 20 years ago. And um, I had back surgery after that and I was able to get off the medication for several months and my back was re-injured because it was not stable after the surgery. Many patients, like this Pueblo resident who asked not to be identified, complain that insurance companies are complicating matters. My insurance company is refusing a medication that's a muscle relaxer and not even an opioid. It's just one that they deem as ineffective, although it has been effective. And I believe that they're citing the reason to be that it does have a potential for being misused. And while pain management doctors don't disagree that they are cracking down to get control of the epidemic. I cannot emphasize the size of this epidemic that's going on. It's really big. Um, it's it's going to get to the point where it uh, exceeds the AIDS crisis. Doctors on the front lines say they're working hard to find alternatives to opioids for treating pain. Ibuprofen and Tylenol. There's other things that are much more rare, like ketamine and Haldol, which we're using for pain. Uh, then there's things that people are familiar with, like lidocaine, which you get to numb your teeth. We're putting that in IVs now to numb areas of pain. Physical therapy is huge for a lot of people. Back pain, knee pain, and hip pain are three of the most common things that are going on. So a lot of it has to do with being overweight. It's hard to lose weight when you're hurting. And while many patients are turning to alternatives, Others don't feel the changing treatment will work for them. Without prescription access to opioids, um, quite honestly, all of my options are bad. Uh, going back to no lifestyle, going to street drugs, or what happens with a few of the more severe patients who have lost access, suicide. So none of those are really feasible. Mark Boyle reporting for us tonight. By the way, the latest studies show there are 100 people dying in this country every day from opioid overdoses. Half of those are prescription overdoses. The two patients we spoke with are looking at some experimental procedures, but insurance does not cover those.